Hello! This guy is obsessed with cars. More precisely, with huge off-road vehicles that can perform cool stunts and jumps. Alas, an ordinary high school student has no means to buy such a monster truck. But one day a strange creature comes to his aid, which is capable of becoming a powerful engine and the world's best suspension for any wreck. Exciting adventures and races await them both, if, of course, no one interferes with their friendship. A red pickup truck cuts through the hilly terrain of North Dakota. On its side is the logo of Teravex, the company involved in fracking and oil production. Professor Dowd gets out of the car, and the CEO Tennyson gets off a helicopter that has landed nearby. The men are discussing a work problem. They stumble upon an underground reservoir while drilling. The assistant explains that this is an important find that must be reported to the authorities. Dowd, however, says there can be no life at this depth because the pressure is too high and the water is saturated with nitrogen. He orders the drilling to continue, and soon the camera shows someone floating in the water and emitting light. The pressure spikes and the water bursts out with tremendous force. Something strange flies to the surface from the well, and the rig explodes, destroying Dowd's red pickup truck. Later, Mr. Burke, the head of security, shows up at the scene of the disaster. Mr. Burke, do you have this under control? We got this one. I have a search party looking for the other two. If the Department of Wildlife finds out about the animals, drilling here will be forbidden. Dowd volunteers to take on the creatures and study them, but one of them hides under the hood of a mangled pickup truck and goes unnoticed. It is towed to a junkyard, and in a nearby town, Tripp, a high school student, lives with his mother and stepfather, Sheriff Rick. Tripp is unhappy with the drilling. His father tells him about how the town has changed because of Teravax. The boy wants a car so he can get away from this backwater. Talking to his stepfather doesn't work out, so the guy goes to the junkyard, where he has a part-time job crushing cars. Mr. Weathers, the handicapped man who runs the junkyard, shows him a red pickup with a perfectly good undamaged engine. Go ahead, it's yours. The guy is going to use it for a personal project, an old SUV that he dreams of turning into a cool monster truck. Tripp is fiddling with the parts when suddenly he sees his long-gone father on TV. Apparently, he recently returned to his hometown to work for Teravex. The man responds to the reporter about the disaster on the rig. The guy is distracted by a strange noise outside where he discovers a car with its fuel tank ripped out. The next day, Tripp comes to school, where he runs into the annoying Meredith. We were matched up for biology today? The guy doesn't care about biology and wants to get rid of the girl as soon as possible. He meets his buddy Sam, and the latter shows him another car with a stolen gas tank. Meredith offers to meet after school for extra classes, but Tripp is going to work in the garage again. After school, the boy goes to the junkyard, where he again hears a strange noise. He discovers the creature sitting in a mountain of used oil drums. Tripp scares it away, and one of the barrels falls into the technical floor of the garage, where the boy decides to hide from the monster. The gray tentacles are reaching for him, and he barely makes it out of the tech floor in time before he's crushed. Tripp pushes the locker full of tools against the door, locking the creature underground, and calls the police. The sheriff and his deputies arrive, but the monster is nowhere to be found. The stepfather doesn't believe Tripp, and accuses the boy of playing a stupid prank. The next day, Tripp talks to Meredith about the creature he's discovered. It looks like a sea animal, and the girl is good at biology. Meredith says that a long time ago, the state they live in was covered in water, and some species might have survived in the deep lakes. Tripp returns to the junkyard and sets up a trap for the monster by placing oil drums on the platform that presses the car frames. After a while, the creature appears. It resembles a slug-like creature with squid tentacles. The monster grabs the barrel and begins to drink oil from it. Like a little baby, Tripp gets closer and the slug scares him away with a scream, opening its round, teeth-filled mouth. The guy drops the remote and the press begins to lower, threatening the creature with death. Trip bravely grabs the tentacle with his bare hands and helps the clumsy monster out. He doesn't understand what this creature is, but feels sympathy for it and gives him some more oil. The monster sees a car with the Teravex logo on it and growls at it. Trip throws a rock at the red pickup. This pleases the slug and he joins in the fun. Meanwhile, Burke contacts the police to trace the escaped creature and learns from the sheriff about a false call from his stepson. He plans to pay him a visit. Tripp himself is already loading the slug onto a forklift to show the sheriff, but this doesn't particularly please the monster. Instead, he takes an interest in the dog and escapes on a four-wheeled cart. The guy tries to bring it back, but can't match the strength of his new pet. It tosses him aside and hides. Burke arrives at the junkyard. The man unceremoniously storms into the guy's garage. The slug climbs under the hood of his pickup, and Tripp does his best to cover the tentacles that pop out. The monster, in turn, starts playing driver and twists the wheels, forcing the car out of the garage. Meredith also shows up at the junkyard with her biology cards. Tripp says he's busy, so the girl asks him to take her home. The guy refuses. 
Burke hears the monster growling, so Trip puts the girl in the car after all and tries to make the pet drive forward. He manages to get the gas going by stepping on a tentacle, and the truck starts flying uncontrollably down the country road. The monster clearly enjoys the extreme ride, and Burke loses sight of them. The protagonists head to Meredith's house and take the pickup truck with the monster to the barn. The girl goes home, warning the monster to stay away from her house. Trip uses her friend's father's tools to modify the car, and the monster learns how to use a screwdriver and replace the pickup's engine with himself, making the wheels spin like crazy. In the meantime, Dowd and Tennyson discuss in the lab that a whole system of underwater lakes and rivers impedes oil production. And in the tanks nearby are two other captured slugs. Trip gives the monster the name Creech, and in the morning, they compete with Meredith on her horse in an obstacle course. As an animal advocate, the girl worries about their pet's well-being. After all, he's not used to living on dry land. Trip assures her that everything is fine, and Creech obviously enjoys racing, and then says he wants to visit his father, whom he hasn't seen in a while, and heads off to the oil rig. Meredith won't let him go alone. At the gas station, the kid meets his classmate in a cool monster truck, who makes sarcastic comments and insults Trip for the dented look of his car. Creech, meanwhile, has been drinking gasoline and is now overly excited. He accelerates too much, almost knocking the other cars off the track, and then driving on top of a bunch of cars in the auto store. At the same time, Creech's brothers, caught by doubt, are starving, as they cannot consume regular food. The scientist gets the idea of offering them oil, and they begin to respond with sympathy. Trip and Meredith visit the boy's father, who is happy to see his adult son. They have a good conversation, and when the boy goes outside, he is met by familiar faces. His own father turns Trip over to Burke, but Creech sees that his master needs help and steps in for him, losing his cover in the process. The chase begins, from which the heroes escape thanks to the monster's abilities. Unlike his pursuers, he can jump and climb walls and roofs, and at the end he soars into the air and even jumps over a moving train. Trip is worried about his father. Meredith encourages the boy. Creech tries to cheer him up too. They stop at the seashore, and the happy monster goes swimming in its natural habitat. He resembles a glowing octopus underwater. Professor Dowd tests the intelligence of the slugs and concludes that the creatures have a collective mind, sharing skills and knowledge with each other at all times. The boss is unimpressed and wants to know how this helps the business. He plans to destroy the creatures along with the oil wastes. The professor protests, but Tennyson blackmails him with his past sins. They have been repeatedly lying to journalists and environmentalists in order to keep pumping out oil. In the morning, Meredith and Trip discover that Creech has taken the truck and fled. Since the guy had left his cell phone in the cab, Meredith tracks the fugitive's position via satellite. The kids call a cab and end up at the Teravex plant. They find the car on the premises, with Creech gone. The heroes sneak inside and find his brothers in cages. In the meantime, Creech bursts into the vault, destroying the wall and attracting the attention of the guards. They put him to sleep with darts, despite Trip's attempts to interfere and take the young men away for interrogation. Tennyson sets out to destroy all evidence of the monster's existence and deletes the pictures of Creech from the couple's phones. But Dowd takes matters into his own hands in secret and says he will help the young men save the creatures. But it's not easy to get the creatures out. It's 70 kilometers of rugged off-road terrain to the hollow where the monsters live. Trip simply smiles back. They just assembled two more monster trucks and they're good to go. He approaches Weathers at the junkyard and gets a list of debtors who haven't paid their pickup bills. One of them turns out to be the gas station guy whose car they confiscate, but it's impossible to get the engines out of the SUVs and make the cars ready for monsters in one night. So Trip enlists the help of a friend, red-haired chubby Sam, whose father is a car dealer. Together, they get to work. Dowd steals the truck with the creatures and brings it to the guys, and Creech finally meets his two tribesmen. There's not much time. They must move out. Dowd, Meredith, and Trip each get into their monster truck. Weathers wishes the guy good luck, and the team hits the road. Sheriff Rick gets a report of a commotion on the road. The heroes are being chased by Burke and his deputies, but Meredith handles the car perfectly and knocks over the two pursuers. The chase moves into the mountain terrain, and Trip is nearly pushed into a cliff, when Creech uses his tentacles in time to perform a life-saving somersault. Burke keeps up and pushes Trip into the cliff again, and once again Creech clings with his tentacles and keeps his car and friend from falling into it. The sheriff catches up with Burke and exposes his car to the blow to stop the villain and flies off of the cliff, smashing his jeep into pieces. 
though he immediately notices some construction equipment nearby. And the villain Tennyson has already ordered the poison to be driven to the underground lakes to destroy the entire ecosystem. The truck with poison is already on its way, while the heroes get stuck on the road blocked by a wall of fire. Luckily, the sheriff is there. He helps his stepson again and clears the way with a huge dump truck. But to catch up with the poison truck, the heroes have to jump off a huge cliff. The monsters help themselves not to turn over, clinging to each other with their tentacles, and eventually topple the truck. However, it turns out that the pumping process has already begun, and only Dowd and Meredith can try and stop the ecological disaster. Meanwhile, Burke knocks Creech and Trip over, flipping their tractor onto the roof. The monster is stunned, his friend helps him wake up, and they run into Birch's SUV head on. The villain's engine power is greater, and Trip commands Creech to get out before they are pushed over the cliff. Just before the fall, however, the monster manages to find the right footing and throws the enemy out like a catapult. Burke's jeep lands right on top of the poison tanks. They burst, and the pressure in the systems drop, saving the underground lakes. But Trip is still hanging by a thread over the abyss, the very crater that leads to the creature's home. A tired Creech fails to catch the boy in time, and they plunge under the water. The glowing monster pulls his friend and car to shore where they are greeted by hundreds of his fellow creatures. All of them have fallen in love with Trip, with their collective minds and hearts. The friends say goodbye to each other, and Meredith and Dowd begin working together to make amends for the scientist's sins against nature. Tennis is indicted, and the father helps Trip install an engine in his green pickup truck, turning it into a cool and powerful off-road vehicle, which he drives with Meredith through the beautiful expanses of North Dakota. As always, Look for the name of the movie in the description of the video. In the meantime, let us know in the comments. Don't you sometimes feel like your car is alive and listening to you too? Give this video a like if you call her by her name. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so more awesome stories come out as often as possible.